Sutra, Ananda, I will now go back and forth comparing these two matters for you to make both of them clear. Commentary, fearing that Ananda might not be attentive, the Buddha called to him once again. Ananda, I will now go back and forth comparing these two matters for you. I will now compare the causes and conditions of these two matters, perhaps going backwards or perhaps forward, describing them to you together. The two matters are referring to the man with the diseased eyes seeing a circular reflection around the lamp, and the entire population of one country seeing all kinds of disasters and evil conditions which were not seen by the people in the, the other country. I will compare these various principles to make both of them clear. Sutra Ananda in the case of the living being's false view of individual karma, by which he sees the appearance of a circular reflection around the lamp. The appearance seems to be real, but in the end, what is seen comes into being because of the cataracts on the eyes. Commentary The Buddha called again to Ananda. Ananda, in the case of the living being's false view of individual karma, the living being spoken of before had his own special individual karma which caused him to see states which in fact were not real. As we explained before, he sees the appearance of a circular reflection around the lamp. The appearance seems to be real. He sees a circular reflection around the lamp as if it were the actual situation, but in the end what is seen comes into being because of the cataracts on the eyes. But when you investigate this doctrine thoroughly, it turns out that the person who sees the circular reflection has cataracts on his eyes, and that is why he sees the reflection. Sutra, the cataracts are the results of the weariness of the seeing rather than the products of form. However, the essence of seeing which perceives the cataracts is free from all diseases and defects. For example, you now use your eyes to look at the mountains, the rivers, the countries, and all the living beings. They are all brought about by the disease of your sin contracted since time without beginning. Commentary The cataracts are the results of the weariness of the sin. The eyes are diseased, and so within the sin, a false sin arises. The false sin is the weariness of the sin. Rather than the product of form, it is not an actual external state. No actual appearance exists which creates the characteristic of the weariness of seeing. However, the essence of seeing which perceives the cataracts is free from all diseases and defects. What is more, seeing circular reflections around the lamp and the disease of the eyes having nothing to do with the fundamental seeing of the seeing nature. It is not that the same nature is diseased, it is the eye which is diseased. For example, you now use your eyes to look at the mountains, the rivers, the great earth, the houses, the buildings, the structures, the dwellings, the countries, and all the living beings. Ananda, take yourself as an example. All these things you see with your eyes are all brought about by the disease of your seeing, contracted, contracted since time without beginning. Sutra, seeing and the conditions of seeing seem to manifest what is before you. Originally, my enlightenment is bright. The seeing and conditions arise from the cataracts. Realize that the seeing arises from the cataracts. The enlightened condition of the basically enlightened bright mind has no cataracts. Commentary, the first seeing refers to the category of seeing, that which is able to see. The second thing refers to the category of appearances, that which is seen. The category of seeing which is able to see, and the category of appearances which are seen, seem to manifest what is before you. States manifest like the ones described above in the example of the man with the diseased eyes who saw circular reflections around a lamp and the example of the people who had comic obstructions and could see all kinds of inauspicious things in their country. The two examples are parallel. Just as people whose eyes are not diseased do not see the circular reflections around the lamp, 
so the people in the neighboring country do not see the inauspicious star size. The circular reflections and the inauspicious size manifest as a result of karma. Karmic obstructions bring about these appearances. Living beings create karma and must undergo a retribution. Originally, my enlightenment is bright. These appearances which arise because of karma basically do not have any connection with my original enlightened nature. The thing and conditions arise from the cataracts because the eyes are diseased. They see these kinds of sick things. Realize that the thing arises from the cataracts. If you understand that the thing is a result of the cataracts on the sick side, on the sick eyes. The enlightened condition of the basically enlightened bright mind has no cataracts. Originally, one soul seeing at sense, one soul basically enlightened bright mind, one's wonderfully bright true mind, the thing which can see the seeing that enlightened nature has no disease, it is without defects. Sutra, that which is aware of the faulty awareness is not diseased. It is a true perception of seeing. How can you continue to speak of feeling, hearing, knowing, and seeing? Commentary, that which is aware of the faulty awareness is not diseased. It is a true perception of seeing. This is the same as the doctrine that when your seeing sees your seeing, the seeing is not the seeing. Your awareness that the eyes are sick is not itself a defective awareness. It is your genuine awareness, the genuine seeing of your seeing essence. Having a defective awareness is like being in water and not seeing the water. A creature submerged in water does not notice the water. It is only when it is no longer in the water that it sees it as water. What is apart from the water and able to see it as water is the genuine basic enlightenment. The enlightened seeing which is aware of the disease is not the seeing what that functions with a defect. Only when you are separate from the defect can you know of it. This is the real seeing. How can you continue to speak of feeling, hearing, knowing, and seeing? Why do you still want to remain within those faculties and make distinctions and seek? This is the seeing. What other thing are you looking for? Sutra, therefore you now see me and yourself and the world and all the ten kinds of living beings because of the disease in the seeing. What is aware of the disease is not diseased. Commentary, the false view of the pupil of one country, the false view of the collective share, and the individual person's false view of individual karma are equally empty and false. Therefore, because of this doctrine, you know, you now see me, Ananda, says the world honored one. You see me, referring to himself and yourself, your own body and the world, all the forms and appearances in the world, and all the ten kinds of living beings because of the disease in the sea. There are actually twelve classes of living beings, but those lacking thought and lacking form are left out because they cannot be seen. All these things are the empty and false defect of your seeing. The false views of individual karma and the collective share. It is our false views, our discriminating views, a problem which develops in the seeing. What is aware of the disease is not diseased. It is not that your true seeing, your originally enlightened bright mind has a problem. The problem is with the false seeing which arises in the false views of your collective karma and which makes you see false characteristics. Sutra, the true essential seeing by nature has no disease, therefore it is not what we normally call seeing. Commentary, the true essential seeing by nature has no disease, its seeing essence has no problem, its basic substance is without defects, so the eyes which see the circular reflection are not the thing essence. Since the thing essence doesn't have any problem, therefore it is not what we normally call seeing. It not only has no problem, it does not have anything at all. Was it called then not seeing? No, there isn't any seeing and there isn't any not seeing. 
What's being discussed here? It is your inherent genuine thing essence which comes from our inherent enlightened nature. It comes from the place of basic enlightenment. But basic enlightenment it also is also a name and basically there isn't even a name. If you give it a name, you are adding a head on top of a head again. If you call it basic enlightenment, you've already said too much. Sutra, Ananda, let us compare the false views of those living beings collective share with the false views of the individual karma of one person. Commentary, Ananda, why do I say that it is all simply the manifestations of the false views of living beings? I will tell you, let us compare the false views of those living beings collective share with the false views of the individual karma of one person. They are the same. The thing that sees the circular reflection composed of multiple layers of the five colors surrounding the lamp is a false view of individual karma. The false view of collective seeing is all the citizens of a country seeing the inauspicious signs. This is two guns, two moons, comets, shooting stars, rainbows, and secondary rainbows, and all kinds of inauspicious astrological signs. In China in the past, every time there was a shift in dynastic rule, every time the dynasty or the emperor changed, these kinds of innocuous things always appeared. Long ago in China, an emperor who saw some innocuous, auspicious signs asked Qin Tianqian, an astrologer, what their meaning was. Qin Tianqian answered that they pointed to the death of the king. But I have a way for you to pass off the calamity of the prime minister. That would be That would not be permissible, said the emperor. If I am meant to die, how can I pull it off on the prime minister? The prime minister looks after important matters in the country. It would never do for him to die. Qin Tianqian said, well, if you don't want the prime minister to die in your place, you can have the people die in his place. It can be turned on the populace of large. The people are the foundation of the state, said the emperor. If the people were to die, what meaning would my imperial reign have? That's also impermissible. He didn't want to do that either. Qin Tianqian said, then you can transfer the calamity to the year. This year the people will starve to death. That would also be possible. But that won't do either, said the emperor. I don't want to starve the people. Is meaningless to be that kind of an emperor. So then Qin Tianqian bowed to the emperor. You are, a, you are truly a just emperor. So with so much good in your heart, I'm certain that you will not die. There has been an evil omen, but it can change and become auspicious. And the next day, the evil omen disappeared. It is clear from this incident that although evil omens manifest, the evil can be transformed into something lucky. It all lies in a single thought of pupil's mind. If a single thought you change, then what might have been evil can turn into something auspicious. The practice of lighting its incense and reciting the Buddha's name before something is about to happen is another method for bringing about a change. Calamities and blessings lie in a single thought to change. Lao Tzu said, If the mind brings forth good, that good effects what has not yet happened and turns it into something auspicious. If the mind brings forth evil, that evil effects what has not yet happened and turns it into something horrendous. In this connection, there are auspicious spirits and evil spirits. You should not think that all spirits are good. The business of evil spirits is repayment in kind. They punish whoever does something wrong. Good spirits protect people who do good. Each spirit has his responsibilities. So the changing of a single thought is extremely important. The fact that that emperor could take responsibility for his own death and not have the prime minister or the people stand in for him 
or cause the year to be a bad one, allowed him to encounter the evil and turn it into good. So these matters are all subject to change. They are certainly not fixed. I am reminded of Yuan Liao Fan, originally called Yuan Xiao Hai, who was an official of the Ming Dynasty. After he finished school, his father told him to study to be a doctor because doctors can save people's lives as well as making a good living. After he began studying medicine, he met an old man named Kung, he, who had a long beard and who was skilled in physiognomy and divination. When he saw Yuan Xiaohai, he said, You should go to school. You are an official. Yuan Xiaohai said, But my father, mother, and family all want me to be a doctor. Don't study medicine, was the reply. You can go to school, and in such and such a year, you will achieve such and such a rank in the imperial examination, and in such and such a year, you will become a high-ranking official. Then in such and such a year, on such and such a day, you will become a magistrate, and you will become well-known. Then when you are 54, on the 14th day of the 8th month at midnight, your life will come to an end. You will have no sons. Not only did the old man date the important events of Yuan Xiaohai's life, he even calculated the day of his death. After the divination, Yuan Xiaohai did go to school, and it turned out that the divination was unbelievably accurate. The rank he achieved in the imperial examination was exactly what old Kong had predicted. The divination didn't miss by the breadth of a hair. In fact, it was so accurate that Yuan Xiaohai didn't even read any longer. What did he do? He waited. He sat there and waited for the bread to come to him. There's a well-known thing in China. You just sit on the bed and wait for the salt case to fall, which means one doesn't do anything at all. One just waits for nature to take its course, waits for one's destiny to unfold. That's also a mistake. That's the way Yuan Xiaohai was then. He didn't do anything at all. He didn't even read. He thought, whatever my fate is to be, I will certainly not fail to receive it. I don't have to study at anything. I don't have to seek anything. It will certainly come on its own. So he ran in the mountain and played in the water and traveled all over on a grand holiday. He took a long-term vacation and didn't do a thing. Eventually, his travels led him to Nanjing, to Chisha Mountain, when he heard that Diana Master Yuan Ku resided. So he went there to see him. Diana Master Yuan Ku handed him a round cushion, and the two of them sat in meditation. They sat facing each other for three days, and neither of them moved. Diana Master Yuan Ku was very surprised. Oh, he said, where do you come from? You're a vessel especially endowed with the way. You've sat for three days without having to shift your legs or move at all. Yuan Xiaohai replied. I know that everything is predetermined, so I hope for nothing. That's why I don't have any false thoughts when I sit here, and so I don't feel any pain in my legs. Where does the pain in your legs come from? It comes from your false thoughts, that is, the false views which this sutra discusses. Because of false views, your legs ache. If you haven't any false views, if you have true views, your legs will not hurt. Yuan Xiaohai said that since he didn't have any greed and didn't seek for anything, he didn't have any false thinking, and so when he said it was not necessary to move. Diana Master Yuan Ku said, I thought you were an extraordinary person, but as it turns out, you're just an ordinary person. That upset Yuan Xiaohai. Why do you say I'm an ordinary person? Everyone wants to come out on top, and Yuan Xiaohai didn't want to finish second either. As soon as he was called an ordinary person, he was unhappy. Diana Master Yuan Ku said to him, if you weren't an ordinary person, you wouldn't have been tied down by your feet for the last several decades. 
You're bound up by your destiny and haven't transcended it in the least. Yuan Shaohai said, Can one transcend fate? Is it possible not to be bound by one's destiny? Diana Master Yuan Ku said, You're a scholar. Didn't, uh, doesn't the Yi Ching say, Bring out the auspicious and avoid the evil. That's what the emperor I just told you about did. He brought out the auspicious and avoided the evil. After that, Yuan Shaohai changed his name to Yan Liao Fan, putting an end to the ordinary. I'm not an ordinary person, he said. I have finished with being an ordinary person. And after that, the earlier divination no longer came true. It was said that he would die at 54 on the 14th day of the 8th month, but he didn't die then. His horoscope said he would have no sons, but he had two. He lived to be over 80, so one's fate is not fixed. And the auspicious and inauspicious are not fixed either. All you have to do is to is do good, for as soon as you change your mind, everything changes. Why are things inauspicious? Because your mind has inauspiciousness in it. That is why you encounter in auspicious circumstances. This proves that false views give rise to false causes and conditions. If your views are true, the false causes and conditions disappear.